Hi, I'm Femi OK. On today's episode of The Stream, could national dialogue bring peace to Ethiopia? If you're watching right now and you're on YouTube, the comment section is live. Put your comments, your thoughts, your solutions into the comment section. I will do my best to include them into the show. And we're doing the show a little bit differently. We are focusing on strategies to get peace for Ethiopia. Earlier, we spoke to Tekle Gebre Michael, and this is what he told us. Number one, the people in Tigray who have been subject to man-made starvation for the past two years must be saved from total annihilation now as a matter of urgency. Number two, foreign forces who are still occupying parts of Tigray must leave. Number three, there should be a mechanism that enables people to elect representative and participate in a dialogue and all options, including referendum, must be on the table. Number four, there should be a true reckoning with the past. And as part of the reckoning, perpetrators must be held to account and justice must be delivered. Well, that is Tekle's checklist. Let's see what our panel have to say about that and their own ideas. They're so used to unpacking problems in Ethiopia. Let's see if they can bring us some solutions for this particular show. Sidele, so nice to have you. Hello, Will. Hello, Adam. Nice to have all of you in our show today. Sidele, please introduce yourself to our global audience. Tell them who you are and what you do. Thank you, Femi. Uh, my name is Sadala Lemma, and I am the founder of the Addis Standard online magazine. Um, currently left the newsroom and uh, moved to be being the CEO of the publisher of the Addis Standard magazine. Good to have you. Hello, Will. Welcome back to the stream. Please tell our audience who you are, what you do. Thank you very much, Femi. Uh, my name is uh, Will Davison. I'm the Ethiopia analyst for International Crisis Group, sort of conflict mitigation organization. Um, and I'm currently in the UK. OK, good to have you. Hello, Adam. Please say hello to our guests and our audience. Tell them who you are, what you do. Hello, Femi. Uh, my name is Adam Abeba. Uh, I am program officer at the International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance, International IDEA. All right, so I'm going to start here on my laptop. We just brought, picked out some of the areas where conflicts are still happening in Ethiopia. If we're talking about this path to peace, this, this little map is really important. Have I missed anything out, Sedele? Are there any other areas where there's currently conflicts or, or, or tensions that we need to take into account before we have this conversation about how do we get peace? Yes, you actually did. Um, the main one is, of course, Tigray and uh, Afar and Amhara, mm -hmm. particularly in Afar, where currently the war has shifted to. Uh, but Ethiopia has a couple of other hotspots as well, and main, most importantly in Ben Shangul, uh, on the western part of the country, uh, but also in western Oromia. You've mentioned it, uh, Oromia in general. Mm -hmm. But the most uh, difficult ones currently are happening in western part of Oromia. Uh, which is also generally in the western part of Ethiopia and in the southern tip of Ethiopia, where Ethiopia is bordering with the Kenyan government. Uh, I'm sorry, with, with Kenya in the southern part, southern oh. tip of it. All right. So, so there's obviously a lot to dialogue about, Adam. I, I'm really intrigued about this national dialogue from your perspective. Who's involved? All of those areas where there's conflict boiling right now, are they all involved in this national dialogue? Um, well, so the national dialogue process has started, but the dialogue itself hasn't. Um, and so the the plan is to set up a commission um, that that is expected to be uh, independent, and that commission will then decide who are critical stakeholders in the process to bring peace in the country. Uh, first, obviously, to 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 silence the guns, to make sure that people that need help, that need basic necessities, are provided with it. Um, and then look at the fundamental issues that divide uh, our political actors, uh, but also society at large. And so it's a process that has started. The preparations have started, but the actual dialogue hasn't. Um, but ultimately, if it's to succeed, it would have to include people uh, that, are, that are fighting the government uh, and, and, and that have complaints in terms of the, the nature of the state and how it's governed. Well, I'm just looking at two different op-eds from aljazeera.com about the same national dialogue. Ethiopia's new national dialogue can unify the divided nation. Ethiopia's new national dialogue cannot deliver inclusive peace. Will, your thoughts? Yes, yeah, so um, I read those, those op-eds and noticed how 
starkly contrasting they were. I think um, there's, there's two basic things to understand about the national dialogue. The first is that you know, classically these processes are for sort of chronically divided societies where you have sort of fundamental political disagreements and people need to find a way to share power. And Ethiopia is the perfect example of this. Um, you know, Ethiopia is different sort of political communities, ethnic groups or, or nations, as they call themselves. They have very different versions of Ethiopia's um, history, the imperial era. They have very different understandings of contemporary history under this multinational or ethnic federal system. Um, and they have very different ideas about where we go forward. Um, should we try and have a more um, you know, unitary or unified state, or should we have more power to the regions and to ethnic groups? And that's why you get these very contrasting viewpoints. So absolutely, a national dialogue is necessary. And I think we all agree on that. The concern at the moment is that you know, another sort of pattern in Ethiopian history has been a process of exclusion. So the people who hold power, they sort of almost monopolize power. And they don't let the other you know, groups or political mm. parties or whoever um, who are outside power, they don't really let them have a say. And then that leads to um, essentially some sort of violent backlash. And I think that's the sort of phase um, that we're in at the moment. And there are very worrying signs that the process that Adam was talking about is set to exclude some very key actors, most of all the armed groups. Um, and they are you know, fighting for political reasons. Um, essentially, and then also potentially some other mainstream political actors. So a national dialogue is needed, but the way things are unfolding at the moment, there is a concern um, that it's really going to be kind of ultimately woefully insufficient to address the, the really serious political problems the country has. All right, guess. let me throw some thoughts at you uh, immediately. Sadile, you go first, and then I'm going to bring in some yeah, of these I, comments. I, go I ahead. agree with, uh, with what William said here, yeah. but I would like to you know, put it a, a, a notch up. It's not just a concert. What is happening now with the process of formation of the national dialogue is starting from the wrong foot. Um, you know, since the, the war broke out, actually, even before the war broke out, the international community was asking the Ethiopian government for this inclusive dialogue. Um, and, and there are some careful sequences that that needs to be that need to be to be followed, particularly after we went into the war. Uh, you have to silence the guns first. And, and it's not very clear that if, the, if this national dialogue commission that is appointed by the government, a party to the conflict itself, can be able to enforce cessation of hostilities to begin with. So it's not forming a commission that is going to, you know, kickstart the process in, in, in the right direction. It is having cessation of hostilities and making sure that the process of formation of the commission itself involves the people that are now trapped in the war zone who don't even know about the formation of this commission. So this is not a concern. This is a dead end from the very beginning. Uh, um, if I could just jump jump in there, I think um, I, I think you can tell that I you know sympathise with Sadali's viewpoint. But I mean, the national dialogue, as I was trying to state, is and I think Sadali would agree with it is it is something necessary. So yes, we we don't want to get off on the wrong foot here. But my understanding is I think this has a sort of initial uh, potentially three year horizon to it. So yes, we're getting off on the wrong foot. But if, for example, we did have progress towards cessation of hostilities, and therefore yeah, we got to a position where we could have a genuinely inclusive national dialogue process. I like to think that you know, whatever exists can be adapted to make it more inclusive and more meaningful in the months and years to come, possibly. May, may, I, may I jump in here as well, Femi? Go ahead, Adam, any time. Um, so, so two things. I think um, Zadale is right, uh, but we have to recognize there are two parallel processes that are necessary. Uh, first one is a peace process. Um, that indeed has to silence the guns and make sure that there are preconditions that, that help people to be able to speak freely, to be able to outline what, what their thoughts are, what their interests are, what their ideas are. So that, that is a peace process. Um, the National Dialogue Commission is not supposed to do that. Uh, it is supposed to deal with issues that underlie uh, some of the, the, the conflicts that we see in Ethiopia, but that also precede the conflicts we see, we see today. Um, and so we, we have to, you know, there must be a process to bring peace, a peace mm -hmm. process. But national dialogue is necessary. Um, indeed, there are concerns that uh, it has to be independent, that it has to deliver. Um, and at the same time, what we know so far from the legislation is that this commission is supposed to be independent. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, it's important that actors, all, all actors should have a voice 
at least in terms of nominating members. Uh, but I think we should be we should be more open to the possibility that it can actually deliver. All right, it's not surprising I, I we have I so disagree. much. I, I, I hear that disagreement, and just just hold on to it for a moment because we have so many comments coming in from YouTube. I want you to engage with our audience as well. But very quickly, I put something to you. Will you come back to me very quickly? So uh, Zanabu says that humanity should come first over politics to save lives. Is that realistic? Will go ahead. Um, I mean, I think the, the, pro the problem is that we have, um, you know, there is absolutely massive humanitarian needs across Ethiopia, um, especially inside Tigray. But I mean, as, as much as we would like that to happen, um, so far during the, the conflict, we've seen massive restrictions um, on humanitarian aid. Um, and ultimately, I think if we're realistic, until we see some improvement in the, in the politics, some improvement in the security situation, right. we're going to end up. I'm um, having a really critical humanitarian situation. So it should happen, but I'm not sure it's going to. Sadale, I would like you to take on Mulu's comment. Mulu said national dialogue is only a viable option at the moment when all the parties have the same version of the conflict. At this time, there is no common ground where the parties can sit at a table. Your thoughts? I completely agree with that. And my, my disagreement with the formation of the national dialogue itself is that if the National Dialogue Commission is supposed to um, have the parties who are these contrasting views of the Ethiopian politics, who have then finally gone into picking guns, uh, are, do not even agree with the commissioners of the National Commission. That means we do not have independent interlocutors to bring the, the warring factions all together who can be trusted by all. So the, the question is that shouldn't these parties be part of nom nominating interlocutors, independent interlocutors that they all agree with, that they all trust so that they can, you know, uh, start discussing. So that's what I'm saying. The commission itself is a flawed mm -hmm. uh, in, in its process, but also who are going to be elected to that. So we don't know, for example, who's representing the Tigrayan people. The National Dialogue Commission is being formed by the by the National Parliament today. Right. The National Parliament means 38 seats in its in its 38 seats representing 7 million Tigrayans who are not having any say on the identities, on the people of this commission. So why would the Tigrayan people, for example, trust these commissioners to start dialoguing with the government that they are at war with? Adam, so go that's why I'm saying sure. this commission is a flawed one. Um, no, I think, so we have to recognize the concern. I think Sadali is right. Uh, but the comments, so I apologize, I forgot the name. Um, the, 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 the idea, the suggestion that we have to wait until there is agreement on some of these things um, actually undermines the very idea of dialogue. Dialogue, you enter into dialogue because you need to agree on certain things, on some of these fundamental issues. And so it's the outcome uh, of, of dialogue, not a precondition to it. Mm -hmm. um, now, what Zadala said is, is accurate, um, but we should not consider so the way the commission is designed is supposed to be independent. So it's not supposed to represent any political groups. Um, and you are right about the absence of, of Tigrayans in parliament. Um, but at the same time, if we have to wait uh, until there's some kind of peace, we may have to wait really, really long. That's one. All right. Uh, all right. Secondly, well, can I just can I just jump in on that, Adam? Um, because so, so, I mean, let me, let me just finish it, half a minute, and I'll, I'll I'll let you. Sorry. Half a minute. The That's a big chunk of that, the show, Adam. Hurry up. Okay. Ten <laughs> Go ahead. Ten second, seconds. second point. The, the second point is that um, this commission. Uh, is being nominated by anybody. And I imagine people who have ideas similar to the TPLF, for instance, uh, and similar with other actors, also had the chance to make propositions. And so basically, just to summarize, this commission is not supposed to represent any political group. And anybody, including people who have the same ideas as the TPLF and other actors, have been able, or at least they, the, the process was open for them as well. I don't think I don't think Adam, you are in tune with the the demand from the international. Demand is a, a heavy word. The recommendation from the international community that had carefully sequenced the process that need to be taken first. Since the the, the onset of this war, mm -hmm. is that the first is cessation of hostilities. The second is humanitarian access. And some countries call for the release of political prisoners as well, and the the withdrawal of foreign forces to pave the way for the national dialogue. These are careful sequences that need to be taken into account if we really want to have an inclusive 
and independent dialogue. So without first silencing the guns and having everybody a chance to participate in the dialogue, you cannot just, it's, it would be just a hit and run process mm. that's doomed to fail from the very beginning. That's why I disagree with the process. Itself. All right, let me create some yeah, space. Let me create some space for you, I Will. To... If, if I may, can I go yeah. to you via Emnet Nagash? Because again, we were working out what are the strategies? What are the, what are the steps to get to peace? Not just unpacking all of the issues. Um, here's Emnet. Will, please jump off the back of her and then take our conversation forward. For a peace deal to happen in Ethiopia, an ordinary citizen would expect an immediate and urgent need to end the direct and indirect killings and lifting the blockade, and people who have been detained based on their ethnic background needs to be released. These are only positive steps towards achieving cessation of hostilities. Lasting peace in Ethiopia is, however, only achievable if hostilities are to be closed with a genuine peace deal, which would include accountability and compensation of the damage that has been imposed, and people's aspiration, including an aspiration to own an independent state, needs to be accommodated. Will, Will was so impressed by that, he froze. Will, pick up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just don't want to forget. I want to understand from, from Adam. He was talking about two tracks here. Um, but you know, what is the point in starting the national dialogue, which we all agree should be inclusive, um, until we've got those cessation of hostilities, until the guns are silent? It seems to me that that should be the first focus, and then we move to the dialogue. Um, in terms of MLET's I mean, I think these are all absolutely valid. I think you know, some of these issues of accountability um, can, you know, come, can come as part of a, of a longer process. Um, I think there's an absolute urgency um, to the humanitarian situation inside Tigray and outside. And there's a, I think the first thing really the federal government needs to do is not just focus on this national dialogue, but focus on alleviating um, these sort of famine conditions inside Tigray, restoring mm. services there. And absolutely, you know, arbitrary... Uh, detentions and, and arrests have, have to stop. But this is all part of this broader package of, of trying to come to terms on the cessation of hostilities and create the conditions for a political process. And I, I have a lot of sympathy for Mnet's views that th these things need to happen first. I want to bring in Teodros Tirfi, who is a chairman of the Amara Association of America. Uh, again, we asked everybody who contributed via video, what are the steps to get to lasting peace? Adam, have a listen to this and then bounce off the back. I would like all of our panel, what are the steps to lasting peace? We see the challenges. What are the steps? This war, the targeted massacres and ethnic cleansing of Amaras has its roots in this ethnic apartheid system. An all-inclusive national dialogue that is transparent, inclusive of independent civic organizations, fair representation of political parties and ideologies, transitional justice, not just since the outset of this war, but over the last 30 years, has the potential to bring about lasting peace to Ethiopia. However, this would necessitate the ruling party to open the process. Um, no, so uh, obviously he was talking particularly from the perspective of Amharas, uh, but I want to I want to emphasize two points. One is that. One of the some of the issues that we are discussing, issues of justice, uh, issues of, for instance, land disputes between Amhara and Tigray, uh, and and other areas, are some of the fundamental ideas that would have to be discussed in a dialogue. Mm. And so, if we hope or if we think that there has to be peace, uh, basically, if these issues would have to be resolved before we get to uh, before before we get to national dialogue, we are essentially preempting some of the fundamental issues that we we need to cover. So, issues of justice, issues of land. Um, issues of um, uh, of, of the, the the recognition, for instance, of some of these political groups are the issues that would have to be determined uh, in in the national dialogue. So it's, you cannot think in linear terms. It's, it, they, they are they are intersect. Some of the issues that are necessary for peace would have to be resolved through national dialogue. So we cannot think in in linear terms. I'm just but how can we that's exactly that why the national dialogue let, should let, be. Let, let me let me start let me start with Will. Will, will you you go first? Go ahead. Just, I mean, how can we ensure the necessary participation of these actors in the dialogue when the conflict is ongoing, when these territorial uh, disputes are, are, are still outstanding? I think the, you know, the key thing is participation and inclusivity. And, and I'm not, I, don't, I don't understand um, how that works in the way Adam's uh, uh, so, things. Like. 
No, no. So, so there are certain. So there has to be a recognition of these actors. That's very important indeed. They have to be included. But the issues, some of the core issues behind these conflicts, require the dialogue to be resolved. So they have to be indeed. They have to be recognized, brought into the fold of the national dialogue process, uh, and and hopefully also the, the guns would have to be silenced. But we cannot assume that some of the fundamental issues, including territory, including justice, these are issues that the dialogue process would have to solve. Okay. We'd have to talk about what kind of justice, what kind of uh, resolution that do, do the um, territorial disputes re require. So we, you know, this is, this is not, in theory, maybe you're right, we have to sequence a bit. In reality, it's a complex process that the two things would have to go together. I want to bring in one more point, if, if, I, if I may, Sadali. And I, can, if you can just give me one. Sure. So I was going to come to you next. I was going to come to you next. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, all right. This, was, this is exactly why we need a very proper sequencing of mm -hmm. events to happen there. Starting from the immediate cessation of hostilities, followed by a, a ceasefire agreement between warring factions and the government, all of them, not only to grand forces, but the Oromo Revolution Front and in Benishangul, there are armed groups there. All of them has to, you know, they have to come into uh, uh, an enforcement of cessation of uh, hostilities, followed by uh, 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 an agreement for a ceasefire agreement. And that, that would then pave the way for the government and for the international community to reach to the affected millions of people are, are threatened by the famine and also the war now. You cannot really dialogue when people are dying of either bullets or hunger. Right. And then you can sequence that one by re good gesture of releasing political prisoners and removing terrorist tags out of the TPLF and OLF so it can pave the way for them to come into the discussion. And of course, you would also have to remove foreign forces from Ethiopia. Today, if you talk to any opposition groups, they're more scared of the presence of Eritrean forces in Ethiopia than any other group. So they cannot have the politically free and independent space to come and discuss Ethiopia's future freely. Right. And that would then give the way for the formation of this inclusive dialogue to happen, where every so, topic so, under the sky should be discussed. Left. No, I, no, I think, for so, nobody Sadala, you, you and I actually, you and I actually agree on the fundamentals, that there has to be nego peace, has to, you know, the, the guns would have to be silenced, uh, the, arm, the armed groups would have to be recognized and brought to the fold. Uh, and of course, humanitarian, those things there shouldn't even be preconditions. Uh, but beyond those preliminary decisions, silencing the guns and recognizing the actors, everything else essentially touches on the fundamental issues mm -hmm. that the dialogue is supposed to address. Right. So on the basics, we agree. But beyond that, the, the issues, including perhaps even the, the, the question of Eritrea and all, it, it's extremely intermingled with some of the fundamental issues around territory and all. And so it's very, very complicated. And if we precondition dialogue on those things be, being achieved... Okay. Uh, it, it we're essentially preempting uh, what, what the dialogue should be. I'm going to pause here. We've had a, a, an ex excellent dialogue on this show for sure. There's one more thought that I want to bring into this conversation, and that thought came from Sina, who was really thinking about political prisoners as well. Just going to bring this in and then wrap us all up. Here we go. We need to cease the violence, open access to humanitarian aid, release political prisoners. There are thousands of them. Expel foreign and non-regional uh, forces, whether it's Eritrea or Amara region, from different parts of the Ethiopia, you know, within Ethiopia too. And um, what will I have left? The second part is to have really achieve uh, a national dialogue that bring the peace that we need. First and foremost, the national dialogue right now going is unlikely to bring peace because it lacks a. The process is not transparent. It is not all inclusive. The key stakeholders are missing. So I'm just looking here on my laptop. This is the question that we started our show with. Can Abiy Ahmed's national dialogue end Ethiopia's war? Thank you to Sadale for Will, for Adam, and for your thoughts and conversation online as well. I think the answer to that is possibly, maybe, more work needs to be done. Talking about more work needs to be done and the work of the stream. The executive producer of the stream is Barry Malone. If you meet him for five minutes, you'll know he's an Irishman. If you meet him for 10 minutes, he'll get a cup of coffee. He is the engine, the caffeinated engine that drives this show and he's leaving. This is his last episode. Barry Malone, thank you.
we're we'll miss you. Take care.